Trigonometry. Trigonometry is something that is extremely useful when working in geometric figures when solving for missing pieces. We've already started it when we started talking about the 3060 and the 4545 right triangles. That wasn't a study in trigonometry, but it is an introduction to what we're trying to do when we're solving for missing sides. Trigonometry comes from the Greek roots trigon, which means triangle, or trigon, which means triangle, and ometry, which means measure. So we're talking about measurements of triangles. Trigonometry is the study of the properties of triangles. We've already studied a lot of the properties of triangles, and it's one of the key concepts when we, stu when we study in geometry. We will study the properties of the ratios of the triangles now. The ratio, or what we're going to talk about, is the word SOKOTOA, or the acronyms SOKOTOA. They are incredibly useful and incredibly easy to remember if you can just remember SOKOTOA. Now let's talk about each of them individually. The SO part, S-O-H, stands for sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. When we're talking about this, these, we're always talking about a ratio, a comparison of two sides of a triangle. We're comparing the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse side of a right triangle. We'll talk a little bit more about what we mean by opposite if you don't remember. Cosine, the ka part, C-A-H, we have cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. When we talk about that, we're talking to the, about the adjacent leg or the leg next to the angle we're talking about and again the hypotenuse which of course is across from the right angle or opposite the right angle. Lastly we have TOA. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Again the opposite is opposite the angle we're at, the opposite leg over the adjacent leg or the adjacent leg next to the angle we are talking about. Let's see how this works. Remember, sine is a ratio. Notice how it's spelled, S-I-N-E. That is the actual correct spelling of it, but it looks like sin. We always pronounce it as sine. So when we're talking about sine, we want to talk about the ratio. It is a ratio of a comparison of sides. If you remember from just a couple slides ago, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. In this question, if we look at it from where, where is Scooby at? Right now, Scooby's at angle A. That means we're doing this question right there. We're trying to find sine A. The reason we know that is because we are looking at it from point A. Now, what we need to figure out is what is opposite over hypotenuse. That is the acronym for sine. OH. So we need opposite and we need hypotenuse. If I go from Scooby and I look, the opposite will be up here with CB and the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle is going to be CA. That means that the ratio we would use is CB over CA. Typically there will be numbers in here, but here we're using it more as a formula or as examples to use in every time. We're seeing questions like this. Now let's move Scooby up to angle C. From where he is at at angle C, we now would have the opposite being AB and the hypotenuse would still be CA. So our ratio from angle C, if we did sine of C, we would do the length of AB over the length of CA. Next we have cosine. With cosine as before, hypotenuse is still there. Now we have opposite and adjacent, but if we're talking about from angle A where Scooby's at, the opposite and the adjacent actually need to switch places because from where he is at, CB is our opposite and BA is our adjacent. If we were to move him, we would also move those. If you remember, cosine is a ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. 
adjacent to Scooby or next to Scooby would be AB, and, opposite, and the hypotenuse would be opposite the right angle, which would be CA. We have opposite, or excuse me, adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, if we move him up here to angle C, we have to move the adjacent. The adjacent is now located right there, CB. If we have adjacent over hypotenuse, the answer would now be CB over CA. Our last example here is tangent. Hopefully you can remember from tangent that tangent is opposite over adjacent. Right now, if we look, he is at angle C. Let's do that one first. Opposite of Scooby would be AB. Adjacent to him would be CB. Our ratio would be AB over CB. If we move him over to angle A, we need to change the names. Opposite would now be CB, and adjacent would now be AB. Looks very similar to the tangent, but it's the reciprocal relationship. Let's try and do a few of these. What I suggest you do is pause the recording for a moment, write down this information, and see if you could write down the correct ratios for sine x, sine z, cosine x, cosine z, tan x, and tan z. It shouldn't take you terribly long, but it would be a good practice for you to do. Okay, let's start with the x angle. If I want to do sine, I need to use opposite, which would be 3, and hypotenuse, which would be 5. My ratio would therefore be, whoops, that is incorrect. I have that in the wrong spot. Sorry about that. Would be 3 over 5. Switch those around. There we go. Then if we did cosine of x, oh, I see my problem. I have Scooby in the wrong spot. Let's back up. Scooby should be up here at x. All right, so we did have it correct. Opposite him would be 4. Adjacent, or excuse me, the hypotenuse would be 5, so 4 fifths. Cosine would be 3 fifths. And tangent, which is opposite over adjacent, would be 4 thirds, because opposite of x is 4, adjacent is 3. So we have 4 thirds. Now let's move him back to angle Z. Opposite of Z, like I was accidentally doing before, would be 3, and the hypotenuse would be 5. We have a ratio of 3 fifths when we're at Z. Cosine uses adjacent. Adjacent to Z is 4, and the hypotenuse is 5. Lastly, tangent of Z would be opposite which would be 3, and adjacent, which would be 4, or 3 fourths. These are just ratios, and they never change. They're always going to be the same. Sine, opposite over hypotenuse, cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent, opposite over adjacent. Next, we've got to make sure we know how to use our calculators. What I need you to do is take a moment and click in all of these values on your calculator. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure it's in the correct mode. So press the mode button on your calculator, then make sure that the degree selection, I think it's the second one down, is highlighted. We don't want it in radian mode, we want it to be in degree mode. So again, we press the mode button, which is towards the top of your calculator, go down three, make sure that degree is highlighted, and then you can exit that menu. Then you, all you need to do is enter or click the button that says sign and enter the number 30 and you should get 0.5. Then do cosine of 60 and lastly tangent of 45 and you should get 0.5 and 1 if done correctly. Those are all nice numbers. They all round off pretty easily or actually don't even round at all. Now let's see some of them that will. 
we have sine of 23. What we suggest and require you to do is round to three decimal places. If we do sine of 23, you're going to get 0.391. It was really 0 0.3907, but that rounds up to 0 0.391. Next, cosine of 46, we have 0.6946, which would round to 0.6945. And lastly, we have tangent of 82, which is 7.1153, which rounds just simply to 7.115. We need to know how to run our calculators for our next steps. Here we go. We want to find the value of x and the value of y. The first thing we need to realize is that we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. We know that because we have the 60 and the 90, which means this angle up at the top has to be 30. So to find y, we're going to set it up as a ratio. Going from the angle 60, we see that sine of 60 would be y over 10, or opposite over hypotenuse. Now all we need to do is cross multiply. So we would have 10 times sine of 60 equals y. This is why we needed to know how to enter in values in our calculator. So if we took 10 times the sine of 60, we would get 8.660. we've now found the value of y. Now we need to move on to the value of x. The value of x, we can do something very similar. This time though, I'm going to use the cosine of 60 because from that angle 60, the adjacent side is x and the hypotenuse is 10. Once again, we will cross multiply and we get cosine of 60 times 10 which is 9.848. We now have the value of the two sides of our triangle. Whoops, I think I might have entered. That doesn't seem quite right. That seems too small. So let's, we better double check that. Hopefully you were checking that on your calculator as you went along. So let's check this one more time. 10 times cosine of 60, which is actually 5. That sounds a little better. Now we have the two lengths of our sides of our triangle. We have the bottom or the leg y, which is 8.66, and our leg x, which is 5. This is where we're going to leave off for today. If you have any questions, make sure to bring them to class. Make sure you've taken very good notes, and we will work on these some more in class.